All right, guys, welcome back. We're going to talk about Instacart today because Instacart is one of the best things going today in terms of growing brands and growing their sales in retail. I will tell you that right now we are crushing it for our brand clients using Instacart advertising. We almost always get an ROI of at least six. We have one brand with an ROI of nine. We have another brand with an ROI of almost 11. A lot of times what we do is rather than coming in to brands that have no spend, which we do that as well, but a lot of times we'll come in and we'll rescue a brand that is not getting the return that they should. I'll give you one case study. We had a brand that was spending $3,000 a month on Instacart. We kept that exact same $3,000 a month and instantly lifted their sales an additional $9,000. So same $3,000 spend, and we got them $9,000 in sales more than they were getting before. And they already had an ROI of almost five. I do wanna note up front, guys, that zero Instacarts were harmed in the making of this video. All right, I'm gonna walk you through a super quick audit of your Instacart ad account. I'm gonna show you what to look for so you can look at your own account and figure out um, if it is optimized and you're getting the, the, the biggest bang for your buck out of your ad expense. I'm gonna give you some quick tips for re-optimizing or even scrapping your campaigns and launching new ones. But before I do, I wanna show you what the upside is. I wanna show you what a good optimized account looks like. So if you look at your screen right here, you've got a date range on the left. You have some important metrics here. If you haven't spent a lot of time in the account, you have your ad spend for a given period. You have your attributed sales, which are your ad driven sales. It's not all of your sales on Instacart, it's just your ad driven sales. Same thing for attributed units, ad driven unit sales. Your new to brand sales, these are sales um, to customers who have not purchased your brand on Instacart before. You have your return on ad spend, your impressions, your clicks, your average CTR. Now, if you look at this activity here on the dashboard, you really have the tail of two ROIs. Back here, the, long, the brand was set up with Instacart and uh, they did not get an acceptable, acceptable return. They walked away and you see this um, no activity, no ad activity here. That's where I was introduced to the brand. I told them I could at least double their return um, and, and that's where I came in. We'll get back to that. If we go back to We'll see how I did. If we go back to their initial launch, you'll see they got a return of 2.88. I told them I could double it. I think double that is 5.76. Don't, don't check me on that. But I think it's 5.76. So did I get 5.76? Let's move forward to January the month that we are in as I record this. And we actually got so far in January 7.55. I think we'd actually want to look at this up through the 26th. There's a there's an attribution lag here. So um, so far in January, we're at really 7.83. Yeah, in the early part of February, I'm pretty confident I get them to a return of eight. So definitely doubled, really about tripled their ROI, and we're in month two. So that's what you can expect um, uh, moving from an auto campaign to a series of manual campaigns. Not necessarily the 7.83, but you can usually triple your return by moving from auto to, um, to manually managed campaigns. One more thing I want to look at. I want to look at the actual sales. So if we go back, I want you to benchmark this, please. September this initial campaign, $1,550. Let's call that $1,500. And ad spend got them $4,500 in sales. Uh, let's see what I was able to do with $1,500. Remember this $1,500 in ad spend got them $4,500 in sales. I was able to get for $1,500. Let's see if that's $1,500. $1,400. Let's go one more day. There we go. Almost identical amount of spend in a much shorter amount of time. $1,550. Uh, there's just $1,550 as well. 
got them 12700 So the exact same amount of spend, which got them $4,500, now got them 12700 So $8,200 in extra sales by optimizing these campaigns. That's what you can do when you optimize effectively. All right, let's audit. Go back to September, this initial campaign. The first thing we're going to look for is, um, am I running an auto campaign? I will tell you right now, auto campaigns are engineered to spend your money, to make sure that you spend all of your budget, not to get you the best return possible. There may be a place for auto campaigns at some point, but that those instances are few and far between. So the first thing we want to look for is this an auto campaign. I'll tell you how to find that. You're going to click into the campaign. The first thing you're going to see when you click in is one or more ad groups. It looks just like the way the campaign was set up. Click into one of those as well. And then the quickest way to figure out if this is automated is you want to click on your keywords. When you click on your keywords, now I converted this from an auto campaign as it was run back in September to a manual campaign. So you're going to see some keywords down here. So we scroll down, you're going to see all these keywords and all this, this data. If you're running an auto campaign, this is going to be empty and you're going to have an option to download a, a search term report. If you have that option to download a search term report, you don't see all these keywords listed out, you are running an auto campaign. So that is audit point number one. Um, and that's a problem. You don't want to be running largely auto campaigns. The second thing you want to look for is if we go back out to these campaigns, am I running one campaign for all of my products or even two campaigns? You really want to segment your campaigns by product type at least, at least by product type. So let's say you have some spices and you have some gravies. At the very least, you want those separated out in two different manual campaigns. Now, the way we do it, if you move forward into, let's go to our optimized campaign set. We have um, several campaigns. And remember, we're in month two. We're going to be segmenting out further. But you can see this is a, a baked goods company. Uh, we have one campaign for vegan cupcakes. We have one for regular cupcakes. We have one for vegan muffins. We have one for various cakes. We have one for birthday cakes. We have one for vegan cakes. So you want to separate it out by product type. And I will tell you right now, we're in the process of breaking these out further um, by flavor. So we're going to have one for carrot cakes. We're going to have one for red velvet. You have to be careful the further that you segment your campaigns, the more careful you have to be that you don't compete against yourself on certain search terms. And the way you do that is you download everything um, and and you, you cross check between campaigns. But uh, again, audit point number two is are my campaigns segmented appropriately? And then the last thing that I'm going to give you, if I open up one of these campaigns, if you're used to uh, maybe um, some other platform like Walmart or um, or Chewy or Amazon, you're probably used to a very narrow keyword set per campaign. Instacart, um, I would not recommend that. So let's see how many keywords we have in this. Um, you can see this number right down here, 414 keywords in this campaign. I will tell you right now, we have a brand where in one campaign they have well over 2,000. So um, you want a lot of keywords. And the reason is, if you look at um, Google or Amazon, there is a lot more search happening. So you're going to get more traction per keyword. On Instacart, it's, not, it's growing very, very rapidly, but you don't have as much search. So you need a lot more keywords to capture those customer searches. So you want to, um, again, audit point number three, you want to make sure you have a sufficient amount of keywords per campaign. Very cast a very wide net on Instacart. So again, uh, our three audit points: Am I running an auto campaign? Am I running a, um, Am I segmenting my campaigns by product type? And do I have a sufficient number of keywords per campaign? Uh, now, if you don't have any of those things, um, I would suggest 
and this is the first optimization tip, take that auto campaign and convert it to a manual. It'll bring all of your keyword history with it and you can start optimizing bids per, um, per keyword. Optimization tip number two is if um, is in populating keywords. If you're intimately familiar with customer search and let's say e-commerce, you could probably populate this by hand. If not, you can go to Amazon and pull your search terms from Amazon by using a tool like Jungle Scout or Helium 10. That'll at least get you started off. So you want to take that ASIN, plug it in Helium 10, download your your search terms, and then um, upload those into Instacart. That's going to get you started. It's not the same. Targeting is not exactly the same between Amazon and Instacart, but it'll get you in the ballpark. It'll get you a start. Now for optimizing bids, last optimization piece, we're going to sort by spend. And we're going to optimize that way first. Why? Because you're going to get the most bang for your buck by um, by optimizing the keywords first where you're spending the most money. That's how you're going to influence your return uh, fastest. So if let's say you have those 2000 keywords in one campaign, which is rare, it's probably too many for most campaigns. But if you do, you're not really going to be able to get through 2000 keywords every two days. So start by sorting by spend and then quick hack um, sort by ROAS. You're going to find some low hanging fruit in here. Usually when you look at your, look at this one, um, there's a misspelling in here. Um, I love misspellings on Instacart. They work so well, but we have a return of 116. <laughs> so if you remember that you, you give me a dollar and I give you back seven, uh, you give me a dollar, I give you back $116 and 50 cents. So um, sort by row as you're going to find some low hanging fruit and um, you don't want to increase bids on all of it. You're going to see some real mismatches and you, you don't necessarily want to increase bids if, if it's not a good match, but you're going to find again, some, some good low hanging fruit and, um, and, and you want to hit those and, and optimize your bids. All right, there you have it. If you need help, um, if you want a free audit, reach out, no strings attached. Even if you want to do it yourself, you can reach out to us at um, Growth at Elite Commerce Group. You can reach me directly at Eric with a C at Elite Commerce Group. Um, happy to chat. Happy to go through an audit with you, even if you want to optimize yourself. Hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.